Lord, uh, Musu MC, I bless the Lord because of his faithfulness and well I hope that uh, you're doing well wherever you are and uh, the Holy Spirit every day uh, is leading you and always through the ways of the truth. That is my hope and I believe that uh, we are not going to grow weary, we are, you're not going to get tired, but on and on you shall keep on, uh, keeping in the in the discipline of a Christian. But uh, you keep on watching, you keep on praying, and of course uh, you keep on observing all these other uh, disciplines. Well, uh, this evening I'm well, and I'm doing well wherever I am. God has kept me. Um, I just bless His name. I I greet you. In, his, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say that uh, we still have faith and ground our faith in him alone. And uh, having this hope that one of these fine day, all things are going to work uh, uh, for, for good for all of us. Because we are kept in his word and we are kept in his uh, cottage, in his temple. And so uh, he's, he's, he's there for us, he's fighting uh, for us. I believe that every other corner, wherever you are, you still keeping on praying for for the church, interceding for it, and for every other ministry uh, that we are keeping on. Uh, we are on toss that uh, as He keeps on His face to shine upon our path, we are also uh, up to that, uh, up to the rest. That we are not going to uh, to, to 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 get weary and of course uh, get tired and of course stand still. But we are keeping on unto, unto the rest. This evening, I have uh, news to us, and I say that uh, as a church, we are growing. Another generation has, ju has just joined us. That is the first years, the, the, the stroke 21. And I take this golden chance to just welcome them. And as they keep on coming, we shall keep on receiving them. And of course, uh, be able to align uh, them in the, in, the, in the church, in the musu. Uh, in, in track of Musu, and of course they are going to grow. Uh, and, I, and I'm sure for this, uh, for the next four years they are going to be here around. For another five years, these people are going to experience uh, the, the God Himself. They are going to encounter God in their lives, and their purpose is going to be illuminated again uh, in their lives. They are going to know exactly what track they follow and which channel. Uh, they follow so welcome our brothers and sisters uh first years feel uh the, at the feet of jesus christ feel this warmth of uh, musu but of course when you're going to reopen we are going to see each other face to face but uh, for the few and the meantime uh we're going to engage one another virtually and of course you're going to have some few programs scheduled for us here and there don't uh, don't rush running away and um and following up what is not right but uh the lord himself is going to keep uh, is going to keep us so uh, for this reason friends i want us to just converge together just before we hear the sermon for today for tonight uh and and just dedicate our brothers and sisters before the lord and ask god that is going to uh, uh, guide guide us make his word be upon uh the be the power uh, be the light upon our feet uh, and the lamb on our feet and the uh, the light i mean on our path and the lamb on our feet and uh and together as the brothers and sisters join us so that we ask him is going to guide us is ask him is going to pave a way for us as him the holy spirit is going to lead their hearts and their souls as their souls as it are eternal they are going to be eternally be led by the holy uh, spirit so just want us to converge together and uh, join me in the prayer and as we pray for them and as we pray for all of us together that uh, we are going to grow in this love of, of christ himself Jesus Christ is going to steal God our uh, uh, center he, himself in our lives all of us together and uh, as brothers and sisters we're going to be united by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ just join me and as we pray father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord God we thank you and we give you all the glory and all the honor my father for your mercy God every morning God are very tender and new in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord God, thank you God because of your love my father and my father Lord God thank you Lord God because of the uh, new and new season my father Lord God that God we, are, we shall continue to engage a brother and as he 
sister, my father, Lord God. And behold, my father, another, another generation comes in my father, Lord God. That God, uh, in this Jehovah, my father, your glory is going to be greater, my father, Lord God. And as your word promises us, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, uh, we hold on to your promises, my father, that are yes and amen uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. I pray, King of all glory, God, uh, you shall illuminate their hearts and their souls, my father, Lord God. Uh, and you shall make their path be clear, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. My Father and my God, we declare and decree no and no form of evil, my Father, Lord God, that has formed and has formed against them, my Father, is going to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Together with the hair of the angels in heaven, my Father, for their well-being, my Father, Lord God. And my Father, you shall strengthen them, my Father, Lord God. And as they walk through, King of all glory, my Father, and along my father and ready to walk with the two and with three and even God with the ten my father Lord God my father and my God you shall feed them king of all glory to get what to feed others in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord God that my father your grace is going to be a lavished upon them my father is going to be enough my father sufficient upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord God thank you king of all glory for you are doing everything for the glory and honor of your name and all thy people say amen 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 thank you thank you so much karibuni sana wapendo wetu first years uh brothers uh, and sisters uh, this is the family yes uh so much great love of jesus christ himself in musu uh, uh that what I, that is exactly what i can uh, um, make you expect and uh as we continue growing together towards the glorification when jesus is gonna come uh one of these fine days and so uh entirely to the church i want to bring and to us the program uh, it's on and as we know that you of course you're always having our our, our services live on facebook every friday from 8 30 uh to 9 30 p.m in the evening and uh, so always welcome and of course remind always our brothers our sister to converge together and um a request to add from the leadership to all of us that uh, we can again come together as, as the members of the church and uh, to support the activities of the church during this time just before we, we, we reopen and we can do that uh, using the Musu line that is the church line that is 07 it's gonna be passing uh, on, on your screen uh, 0792 71 uh, 0067 uh, feel free and I encourage you, brother and sister, to come and uh, 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 support uh, the ministry, support the church, and also support the activities as we go along. And so uh, that is, is it, and I, I just and encourage you, uh, uh, come out and uh, be together as brother and sister. We're having the program that is on. Leaders have converged, uh, always praying and uh, asking the Lord. To continue be with us and so you also you are together with us in prayers I want to make um bring to us in a change that uh, has occurred from our Monday prayers and fasting now we can be doing it on a Saturday a prayer and fasting together entirely as a church we do that and uh, because of that we are having now the prayers that same Saturday that is always happening on a Zoom. And so could you be having such a desire to be together with the brothers and sisters to praying together? Now you can also now get to uh, uh, reach to our, uh, our secretary, that is June, who is always flexible. And then uh, from her, you'll be able to get the, 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 uh, the link, I mean the passcode, and even uh, and, and the ID. Of the meeting and so together we can converge and again pray together for the church and so i just want to remind you brother that uh you go to a church and you find uh, a decreased number of people who are praying uh that tells you the size of a church now our church musu is a big church that is only to tell us that let us come up in numbers and pray and seek the face of the Lord and inquire of his will and follow unto his will and be in line to his will. Thank you so much.
uh, the, the prayers are always from 8 p.m. to 9 that p.m. and it is together with the Bible study, a portion of Bible study, some, some minutes towards the end, that is probably 40 or 50 minutes towards the end. And so um, that is it. And so alongside with this, I also want to encourage you, if you will ha be having any desire to encourage a brother or other sister with your, your testimony of what the Lord has been doing to you, has done to you throughout this period, and you can give a testimony of approximately 10 to 20 minutes uh, just before then it can be aired just before uh, uh, we begin our service that be before the, the preaching is on every Friday you also can get in touch with our secretary June through the same same line 0792710067 so get in touch and uh, as we continue uh, we, we, we are going to encourage one another and, 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 and of course trying to keep one another as a brother and as a sister and so that is what I had tonight and before that I just want to welcome our preacher for tonight and just introduce uh, him uh, to us of course I know a number of us remembers our brother Mokle Mwangi is still part of us still part of this family so today you're gonna be listening to the stability in times of crisis. You as a Christian, you're gonna be stable in times of such crisis because I know we are sojourners on this earth. See, we are just passing, and we're looking towards the our home where the architecture himself is God. Beautiful home it is. That is where we are looking forward to. And just before he comes in, allow me to read, uh, to make a scripture reading. Of course, that is a tradition as Musu. Join me and read in the, Psalm, uh, in the book of Psalm chapter 34. Uh, read the first 10 verses just because of time. And so the Bible says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with, with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This, uh, this poor man called and the Lord had him. He served him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them test and see that the lord is good blessed is the one who takes refuge in him verse 9 says fear the lord you his holy people for those who fear him lack nothing now verse 10 says the lions may grow weak and hungry but those who seek the lord uh, lack no good think oh my god we just more than expectant tonight to, to hear from the Lord through his sambo servant, uh, Mokle Mwangi. And let us pray as, we, as he comes along. Uh, my Father in heaven, thank you so much because of your word. You say that as it, it comes from you, my Father, Lord God, it will never return, my Father, until it accomplishes whatever the purpose, my Father, Lord God, you have said it with. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now tonight, my Father, Lord God, it is changing our lives. It is transforming King of all glory, our hearts, my Father, Lord God. Thank you, my Father, because of this stability, my Father, Lord God. Now, now you bring unto us, my Father, Lord God, and with this knowledge, King of all glory, that we have it from you, my Father, I pray and I declare and decree, my Lord, that we are not going to, uh, to perish in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of all glory, my Father. Even because of your servant as he comes, my Father, Lord God. You are speaking through him, my Father, Lord God. Thank you, God, because of the spirit of boldness in his heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. And my Father and my God, as you're doing it, you're doing it for the glory and honor of your name and all thy people say, Amen. Thank you and welcome so much, friends, for the service tonight. Welcome, Brother Mangi, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hello, good evening and praise the Lord, friends. Uh, allow me to start off by saying that it is indeed a great privilege and a great delight to be back to Musu, though virtually. Uh, and to also say to God that we are grateful for the wisdom that he has given to our leaders uh, to show that it is possible to leverage on technology and continue to have our fellowship close to, close to normal. Uh, my name is Moklem Mwangi. Christ is Lord. I was in Moi as a STEM staff in the year 2018-2019. <laughs> Sorry I made that look so long ago, yet it's only last year when I left. Uh, and God has been good to me since, uh, and I'm grateful for his provisions. I'm coming to us from Moranga, where I am currently at. So allow us to start as, uh, or rather allow me to start us off on our topic of discussion tonight, which is spiritual stability in times of crisis. And I would love to start us off with a famous story which some of you may have already heard at some point. And a story is given of a father who flew with his son. And in the course of their flight, the plane hit some turbulence. And every other passenger, every other crew in the cabin was, was, was fearful. And, 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 and they were really fearful that their plane was coming down. They were almost uh, coming to a crash. And in the course of all these hula baloo and fearful moments, uh, it was realized that there was this one young man who was sat on his feet all through, and he had kept his peace all through the turbulence. And when the plane finally came out of the turbulence and on the other side, uh, one of the passengers approached this young man and asked him, why is it that, well, the rest of us, we are all fearful because of the turbulent times that you are going through, why is it that you managed to keep your peace? And the young man said to this passenger, the captain is my father, and I have total trust in his ability. And I know he will do everything in his human capability to make sure that I am safe. Uh, that story points us to the level of trust that this young man had put in his father. And I would want to have us have that story at the back of our minds as we look at our topic of discussion tonight. Now, the Bible has several models of people who have held God in such level of trust, having in mind that now we are not talking of a humanly father, but our heavenly father. And one of the people who would say held God in such level of trust is David. And so in our topic of discussion tonight, I would want us to largely look at the life of David. And we will not look at his entire life, rather we will just have a look at one of the hardest phases of the life of David. And see how David was able to still hold on to God uh, despite the hard times that David was going through. So we will do quite a bit of reading from the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, we will look at the face of uh, David when he was running away from Saul. Uh, and then I will give us four biblical principles which I hold to be true as to why David was able to keep his spiritual favor. And one of the spiritual principles that I'll give us is uh, devotional life. Two is his deliberate talk time with God. Three will be divine instructions and guidance. And the fourth and the final one will be the discipline of fellowship. So I would love us to start off from the point where David is anointed as king by Samuel in the book of 1 Samuel 16, verse 11 to verse 13. And as we may all know, this happens after God rejects Saul because Saul is not uh, obedient enough to uh, destroy the Amalekites as God had uh, commanded him to. So the Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel, beginning, uh, or rather 1 Samuel chapter 16, beginning verse 11. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They are still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Uh, Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with wealth and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. 
Now, the Bible, w w what I want us to get from these three verses is that the Bible is very clear that David was the youngest of the sons of Jesse. And while the Bible is largely silent on the age of David when he's been anointed king, it is estimated that David was an adolescent at that time. Uh, the Hebrew word translated youth can actually mean boy. Uh, and and, and, and that, that word in Hebrew could be used to refer to a child of any age from infancy uh, all the way to late adolesc adolescence. Sorry. So David then becomes king over the whole of Israel in the book of 2 Samuel 5, 4. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. And the Bible here is clear that David was 30 years old when he became king. Now, there is quite a number of years, the years that I would want us to call in between years for our discussion tonight. Uh, in between years from the day when David is anointed as king to the day that David finally becomes king. And these are the years that I would want us to focus on tonight. Uh, the occurrences in these years are enough to dissuade David about ever becoming king. And, and, and I would want to point to some few instances which I see as very devastating for David. Let's take a closer look at what makes uh, these years to be years of crisis for David. Uh, one, things began going wrong for David in the book of 1 Samuel when women composed songs and they were praising Saul for killing thousands and David for killing ten thousands. And from that time on, the Bible says that Saul kept a close eye on David, not with the intention of uh, looking after him, but actually with the intention of killing him. And in the book of 1 Samuel 21, David runs away from Saul, and he goes to the king of Gath, who was called Achish. Now, remember that Gath is a Philistine city, uh, the very Philistine that David had fought against. Now, something happens, and this is the first instance where we see David really... Uh, going down to such critical moments of his life. Now the Bible says in, in, in 1 Samuel 21 from verse 11 to 13, But the servants of Achish said to him, Isn't this David the king of the land? Isn't he the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Achish king of Gath. So he pretended to be insane in their presence, and while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, uh, making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. Now, this is David, and remember, he, is, he has already been anointed as king uh, probably years ago, and here he is running away from Saul. And when he gets to the king of God, Achish, simply because he fears that these people will take him and probably even kill him, now that the Philistines were uh, sworn enemies of the Israelites, he pretends to be a madman. So that is one of the instances where we see David uh, living through very critical times. The second instance that I would want to bring to our attention uh, is two chapters away. First Samuel 23, we read of David now running away to the wilderness. And he stays in the strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Now, the Bible continues to say that Saul pursued David, but God did not give David into the hands of Saul. Now, in, in, in Samuel 23, these people, the occupants of the desert of Ziph, called the Ziphites, actually sell out David. And they go to Saul and tell him, actually, David is living amongst us. And so Saul again tries to kill David. And finally, the third instance that I would want to speak to us about David going through a critical time happens in 1 Samuel again, verse 24, or rather chapter 24. And here we see Saul resuming his search of David from, verse, uh, from chapter 23. Now David now is in the desert of En Gedi. And we know this instance, it's a bit popular because this is when David gets the chance, the first chance to kill Saul. But David does not actually kill Saul because he says Saul is God's anointed, and he would not touch uh, uh, the Lord's anointed. So these three instances is just a glimpse of the kind of crisis that David was in this in-between years. And it's just a sample of the tough, term, of the tough times. And, and, and as you continue to read through uh, First Samuel in the last chapters and even Second Samuel, you continue to see the kind of crisis that David went through. 
Now, were these easy times for David? Now, the answer is absolutely no. The, 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 these times were not easy for David. Actually, one of the Bible scholars say that these were moments of fear, moments of temptation, moments of inward conflict, depression, grief, and fear, such as described in the Psalms which refer to David's wandering. Uh, and, and, and I would want to again bring us to uh, a few Psalms uh, that David wrote, or rather David penned down during these tough times uh, when he was under. Psalms such as Psalm 63, Psalm 59, Psalm 57, Psalm 34, and Psalm 52, and a few others which David uh, wrote down during these moments when he was fleeing from Saul. So the point is, these really were not easy moments for David. And I would, we will look at some of these uh, Psalms later on just to see how is it that David managed to keep his peace? How is it that David managed to keep his head high despite the tough times that he was going through? How did David manage to keep his spiritual favor despite uh, the, 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 the moments, the critical moments that he, he was going through? And like I said, the first biblical principle that I see David as upholding so as to keep his spiritual favor in these critical times is, is, is devotional life. Now, devotional life is our first area of focus. David's very lively devotional life is evident in Psalm 34. Remember Psalm 34 is one of the Psalms that I told us David uh, wrote down while, while he was fleeing from Saul. Actually, David wrote this Psalm uh, the psalm sounds to be jovial, but David wrote this psalm at a time when really joy was nowhere near him. Uh, and, and, and this psalm was written uh, in one of the instances that I highlighted earlier, early, sorry, earlier on, when David feigns madness. Uh, he feigns madness to flee from the Philistine city of God. Now the first two verses, or rather the first three verses of this psalm read, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory uh, in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Now, the tone of that psalm sounds to be jovial, and, and, it, and it actually is. But the events that surround this psalm, as recorded in 1 Samuel 21 and 22, are not as jovial. Uh, because I think I just gave us what, what the activities that we are surrounding uh, David as he wrote down this psalm. Now, these are very humiliating moments for David. He has had to feign madness just to get himself off the grip of the Philistines. It is such a genuine low moment for David, but despite that, he still is filled with praise and trust in God, as we read in those three verses. Now, what is, this, what is in this for us to learn? What is our recourse when we are faced with critical times? Do we have time to praise God even in the storm? Now, ironically, more often than not, the very devotions that should uphold us in such critical moments are the first ones to suffer. In our critical moments, it's, it's, it's very often that we choose to neglect our devotional lives, we lose our consistency in Bible reading, we do not meditate God's word as often as we should. We, we at times even suffer from prayerlessness. And what we are reading from David is that despite those very hard moments, he still upheld his devotional life. And this uh, uh, Psalm 34 has very assuring verses. For instance, verse 17 and verse 20, very assuring verses for uh, for, for us going through uh, critical times. The Bible says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. So, brethren, God's embrace is warmest in our coldest of times. And so I ask us, may we not forsake God in our moments of hardships. May we not uh, downscale our devotional moments uh, in, in such times. In any case, or if anything, may we choose to resolve. Uh, or rather, may we make our resolve even stronger 
in light of the assurances that God has given to us uh, through David. The second biblical uh, principle that uh, uh, that 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 David upholds is that David continues to have deliberate talk time with God. Deliberate talk time with God. One thing that stands out for me through the whole uh, uh, the whole of this psalm that David penned down around this uh, in between ears is that David is able to express his raw emotions to God. Reading through the psalms. One often feels the very personalized nature of David's uh, talk time with God. He simply does not throw generalities and pleasantries in his, uh, in, in, in his prayers. Rather, he has a very uh, deliberate talk time with God, with very personal issues. And I would want to give us two instances. Psalms, or rather Psalm 142. Uh, now, Psalm 142 is written, uh, in, or rather the event in Psalm 142 are discussed uh, in uh, 1 Samuel, the instance that we talked about when David flees uh, from Achish, the king of Gath, and he flees into a cave. So the Bible says in Psalm 142, verse 5 to 7, I cry to you, O Lord, I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Now, David is very honest with God when he says that he has been brought very low. He expresses what is going on through his life at that very moment. Let's have a second instance. Psalm 56, uh, still written around the same time when David is captured by the Philistines in Gath. Now, verse 1 to verse 3 says, Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me all day long, an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So David here lets it out all on God. He, when he's afraid, he's able to say to God that I'm afraid. When he feels trampled by people, he's able to say to God that I feel trampled on, uh, trampled on by people. When he is in pain, he says it. And oftentimes we hear David say in the Psalms that he cried out uh, to the Lord. And you will agree with me that a cry, honestly, is not made out of uh, joy. Rather, it's made out of pain. So we too need to come to the point where God is close enough to us to have such honest and, 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 and genuine talks with him. The Lord is eager to hear us tell him of our very intimate uh, and genuine issues, issues that could be afflicting us in our times of crisis. The Lord is eager to hear us talk to, us, to, talk to him about those intimate, intimate and, and, and genuine issues. Now the words of a famous hymn, come to mind. Allow me to, to, to read the lyrics as opposed to singing them for obvious reasons. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he will take and shield you. You will find a solace there. So, brethren, I ask us to take the model of David and even in our moment of crisis, have deliberate talk with God. Have a time when you will speak to God about your very raw emotions. Uh, it, it beats me how uh, we are quick to run to our friends uh, and, and at the back of our mind we seem not to remember that actually Jesus says he's our friend also. And so I would ask us to take up the offer that Jesus has given us, an offer of friendship, and take to him uh, our 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 weak moments in in prayer. The third 
biblical principle that I see David uphold is divine instructions and guidance, following divine instructions and guidance. Now let's go back to 1 Samuel 23, 1-4. Now here we will read 1 Samuel 23 from verse 1 to verse 4. We will read of a very divinely guided decision that David made. Uh, let me read to us quickly. 1 Samuel 23 from verse 1 to verse 4. When David was told, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are looting the threshing floors. He inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, Go, attack the Philistines and save Keilah. But David's men said to him, Here in Judah we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the Philistine forces? Once again David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Keilah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. Now in these verses, David gets a report that the Philistines are attacking Keilah. Now, this is a hard and a risky decision in two ways. First, at this point, David is only have don't, David is only having a group of around 400 men, uh, men who are described in 1 Samuel 23 as men who are in distress and men who are in death. Not exactly the kind of men you would want to have beside you in in in, in a war situation. Secondly, David is already fleeing from Saul. So one enemy is, is, is already one too much. So he, it would not be very likely that David would want to get himself into a war with the Philistines, yet at the same time he's fleeing from Saul. But the Lord still says to David, go and attack the Philistines. Now you can tell again that this is not exactly an easy decision for David to make. Because when God gives him that assurance uh, in verse 2, telling him go attack the Philistine and save Keilah, David's men in verse 3 voice their opposition and they say that we are already afraid here in Judah. How much more when we go to, to, to the Philistines? And, and, and David somewhat seems to agree with these men, but he still goes back to God and consults him again. And in verse 4, the Lord reassures or reconfirms his word as he had spoken it in verse 2. Now, David then goes on with his 400 or thereabout men uh, to fight the Philistines. Simply because that was a divine instruction. He was divinely guided by God to attack the Philistines. Now, I see David as one who knows the import of seeking God's voice and obeying his command, even when it is least likely. Or rather, even when God's command seems the very unlikely thing to do. Now, the trait this trait of David gives him such assurance of victory against the Philistines, and indeed that victory is delivered. Now, David simply does not fail to do what God says because it is unlikely. Much as it was not the very likely thing to fight against the Philistines, given the situation that David was in, for the two reasons that I have given us, David still goes on, and that speaks to us. When we ask for divine instructions to God, and when he has finally spoken on what he would want us to do, are we, do we follow through? Do we follow through uh, his commands, or do we stop at hearing him? Let's move on. Now, in the verses that follow, we read about a certain son of a priest, Abiezer the son of Ahimelech, now who carried the effort with him. Abiezer had run away when Ahimelech, his father, was killed by Paul, uh, by Saul, sorry, as he pursued David. Now Abiathar runs away to David carrying the effort. And, and later on we still see David seeking to know what God would want him to do at that very moment of crisis. Now listen to verse 9 to 12 of uh, the same chapter. When David knew that Saul plotted evil against him, he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the effort here. Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant had? O oh Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. And David said, will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver you. So David and his men, about 600, arose and departed from from Kayla and went wherever they could go. So, brethren, again here we see David really loved to seek God. 
And more importantly, whenever he had what God had to say, whenever he received those divine instructions and guidance, he obeyed even when that command seemed removed from the critical time he was going through. We've just seen that even though it seemed the very unlikely thing for David to do, to attack the Philistine, he still went through. He still went, uh, uh, he still followed through uh, the, Lord's, the Lord's command. Finally, I would want us to look at the last biblical uh, principle that I see David upholding in the, in the critical times. And, and it is for us also to uphold the discipline of fellowship. Now, the discipline of fellowship is evident to me in two ways. First, in 1 Samuel 23, 16, at a time when David is freed from Saul, the Bible reads, And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. Do not be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand, a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. Now, that's the first instance where I see uh, David upholding fellowship. That in those tough times, his fellowship with Jonathan was such a critical arm of comfort uh, in, 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 in those, in those, in those uh, moments of crisis. Also, we have already made reference to these men in distress. Indeed, they were men in distress, but in their interactions with David, a lot of other positive things are said about these men later on. So it's only reasonable to think that David taught these men his own lessons of faith and his fear of God. It was also reasonable to think that when David is composing and singing these psalms, he is actually doing it in the hearing of these men. And so the point here is we will need each other in our moments of crisis. We will need help from brethren. The same way David had help from Jonathan, the same way these men in distress and death found help in David, we will need one another. And so my challenge to us is may we be available for one another to give each other strength or to help one another find strength in God. And so in conclusion, we see David as one who underwent very devastating times from the point when he was anointed king to the point where he finally becomes king. And that period spanning between his adolescent years and his 30 years uh, when he becomes king, that in between, those in between years are actually very critical years for David. But we see that David, despite all that, is able to maintain his spiritual favor. And he does, though, by observing these four biblical principles. One, upholding a devotional life. Two, holding deliberate talk time with God. Three, following divine instructions and guidance. And four, maintaining the discipline of fellowship. And so, brethren, I ask us tonight that we may choose to follow the tough times that we are going through, or rather, that we could be going through. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for the time that you've given us to reflect on your word. We are thankful because of the example that has been set by your son David. We are grateful, Lord, because even in the hard times that he faced, David still uh, was able to keep his relationship with you. He was still able to keep his peace. He was still able to keep his stability spiritually. And for that, Lord, for giving us that model, Lord, we are grateful. And so we ask that would you help us to follow uh, the lessons that we have learned about David that we will also be able to keep our peace, we will be able to keep our spiritual stability even in times of crisis. I commit my friends, brothers and sisters in Moi University Christian Union, would you keep them, would you protect them, would you have them, oh God, with you even in these uh, times of crisis. And despite, oh God, whatever it is that uh, they could be going through individually, we pray, oh Lord, that you will come through for each of them in a unique way. All these we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brethren, for your time. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though this